Hi everyone, welcome to the Aquarium Online Academy. My name is Stacy, and we are here in our Blue Cavern exhibit. Actually, we just have the Blue Cavern exhibit playing just behind me using one of the webcams that we have um, that run live on our website. So if you wanted to check it out, you could actually check it out yourself. Now for this episode of the Aquarium Online Academy, brought to you by the Aquarium of the Pacific, we are actually going to be looking at some seabirds, specifically puffins and penguins. So I hope you're ready to explore the world of birds. Um, I sure am. And in order for us to really dive into them, we're actually going to need you to participate. So if you have any thoughts that you'd like to share or questions that you want to ask, we definitely want to hear from you. Please send us a text. The number is right down there. It's 562-286-1838. All right. Now, if, uh, if you need to ask permission, please make sure that you do because texting rates will apply. So, uh, so sometimes permission is necessary. Now, when you send those texts in, my friend Carrie is actually at a computer and she can write down those questions for me and, and send them on into the studio here. If you'd like your name said, uh, please add your name to that text. Okay. So uh, that would be fantastic. And then we can answer your questions and, and we can learn together because although I love puffins and penguins, I don't know a ton about them. So I'm actually quite excited to learn too. Okay. So puffins and penguins. Let's take a look at a puffin. All right. So I want you to take a look at this picture of a puffin. And um, many of us know penguins, right? We know penguins. We've seen penguins on TV. But have we seen puffins? Are we familiar with them? Maybe not so much, right? So this here is called a tufted puffin. And I know it's called a tufted puffin because take a look at this really cool feather dew over here. That is a neat little tuft. And that is why it's called a tufted puffin. Now we have four different kinds of puffins in our, uh, in our world. And this is one of them. And so I want you to take a close look here. What are some things that you see that might have in common with a penguin? And what might be different? All right, so just take a moment and, uh, and think about that. Now, I actually think, uh, let's see, Jen, if we could bring up a full-size picture of, I think, a couple of horned puffins, I believe, um, that would be really cool because here is another kind of puffin. These are called horn puffins. So do you notice that there was a difference, right? The tufted puffin had the tuft, that yellow tuft that came up from its head. The horn puffin here, if you look above its eye, that is a fancy feather that almost looks like a horn. So go ahead and observe this one. What does it have in common with a penguin? And what does it have that is different? All right, so I hope that you've had a few moments to really think about it. One of the things that I think they have in common is they're birds. Um, so they are both birds. You have um, a whole bunch of feathers, okay? And that's one really uh, key characteristic of a bird. Another thing they have in common is that they are black and white. So now this bird does have a little other colors, right? Uh, we see some yellow and some orange, but we do notice that on its back, all along its back is black, just like a penguin. And all on its chest here is white just like a penguin too. This is actually a fairly common color combination that you see in the ocean. Think about like an orca, for example, or even if you think about like a great white shark, it's not black and white, but it has dark gray on top and a white belly. This color combination is called countershading. It's actually a form of camouflage, which means it helps it to blend into its surroundings, which is the ocean. Now, it's hard to imagine that this black and white, because it's so vibrant, helps them blend in. But in fact, it does. Because if you were above this bird, looking down on top of it, you would see that really dark colored back. And that dark colored back matches the dark colored ocean. Um, especially if it's like swimming around and you're in the water, the bottom of the ocean floor might be pretty dark. And so that black back will blend in really, really well. Now, on the opposite end, if you were underneath the bird looking up, the, the uh, brightness of the sun at the surface of the ocean is going to really match that white colored belly 
that it has. So this counter shading is a really interesting uh, type of camouflage, but it seems to work very well for animals like these, both puffins and penguins. So that is something that they do have in common, that black and white coloration. Again, they have all of these feathers, but something that is really different, that it's hard to tell just from a photo here, is penguins can't fly. Penguins are birds, and they walk around, and they swim around, and that's basically it. Puffins, on the other hand, they can fly. They are big-time flyers. In fact, they are such big-time flyers that when they make their nests, and when they just kind of hang out, they will often be found in very rocky areas. And that's what you can see right here. Okay, so you can see this. Uh, there's a ton of rock here. They like to hang out in, um, on beaches that have lots of rocky cliffs because that's a really great place to hide. Not as many predators can get to them. Um, when you live on a rocky cliff. Just think about what kind of animals that might eat a bird can actually climb a rocky cliff. Not many. So it's a great place to stay safe. And having wings that help you fly is perfect for that. So we know that they're big time flyers. Now take a look at that beak. What are they going to eat with a beak like that? Now, did you know you can actually learn a lot about an animal just by looking at, um, just by looking at them in general, okay? So we can learn a lot about them that way, but if you really want to know about what they eat, take a look at their mouths. So they have this beautiful beak. This horn puffin actually um, has this vibrant beak when it's breeding season. So they want to show off to all of the other puffins out there. I'm really healthy. I have bright colors on my beak. Um, and that's when you see this vibrant yellow and orange, almost red coloration. Uh, later on, when it's not really breeding season, the colors actually dull out a little bit and you don't see that really beautiful coloration. So um, even their feathers might change too, which is kind of interesting. They get grayer, not as bright black and bright white. So what are they gonna eat with that beak? If I tell you this is a bird that lives in the ocean and it dives in the ocean, what would you think it would eat? If you were thinking fish, nice job. They absolutely do eat fish. Take a look at that. Now, this is not just one fish, is it? There's a lot of fish in this little puffin's mouth. <laughs> this little puffin can actually hold up to 20 little fish at a time. Just imagine that, 20 fish. Now it's not like it's diving into the ocean, it goes ah, and then 20 fish fly in there, right? Or swim in there. That's not how they work. They actually catch some, swim a little, catch a little more, swim a little, catch a little more without letting the other ones go. That, my friends, is talent. Um, I don't know if I can fit even like 20 chips in my mouth. I've never tried though. Um, and chips don't fly away or swim away. So they're really, really great at being able to hunt for their food so they can locate those fish and really, really great at being able to capture those fish too. All right, we have um, a question from Gianni, from Oliver and Julian. Uh, how long can puffins and penguins hold their breath underwater? Ooh, that is a really great question. You know, I'm actually not sure how long a puffin, a puffin can hold its breath underwater. It's not very long. I, I want to say it's probably in the realm of, of minutes, so a handful of minutes. Um, and I know that that's basically the same for penguins too. Most penguins um, don't hold their breath for a very, very very long time? About a, minute. about a minute. Okay, so it sounds like for puffins, about a minute. Um, and it's because most of what they're trying to eat are going to be fish and krill. Krill are like uh, shrimp looking animals that a lot of big whales eat. And those tend to be found toward the surface of the water. So they don't really need to hold their breath for a very long time. Um, for penguins, many of them hold their breath for, I think it's like up to like five to seven minutes or so. Um, but most won't even hold their breath that long because again, they're really gonna go after the food that they find that's close to the surface of the water. So that holding the breath isn't really needed. The other thing too is that when they are diving and swimming underwater, it takes a lot of energy. And when they're active, it's gonna use up a lot of that oxygen that they are breathing. So very uh, useful or very important to them. Um, what type of fish do they like most? Uh, small fish. 
<laughs> there's a couple of different types of small fish. Um, anchovies are one of them. Silver sides are another one. There's a bunch of uh, small schooling fish. And it's actually really lucky for them in some ways that they eat small fish because those small fish, there tends to be big schools of them. So you're going to find thousands of those little fish hanging out all together, which makes it a little bit easier for, um, for the, the birds to catch them, for both penguins and puffins to catch them. All right. All right, we have um, Mila asking, what do horned puffin females look like? They actually look the same. So in this picture here, we might actually have a male and a female. I'm really not sure. They look the same. And it's the same thing with penguins too. The males and the females actually look very, very similar. So um, there are some birds where they're very different, right? The boys and the girls look super different from each other. But for puffins and penguins, they actually look similar. Thanks for that question. And then we have Harun asking, um, what are puffins predators? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, you know, I've never really thought about that too much. It would probably be um, things like foxes. Um, I bet you... Oh, man. You know what? I'm going to ask my friends here that I have in the studio uh, to maybe help us out with um, with puffin predators. Goal. Oh, gulls. Wow. Gulls. Like a seagull? Um, and I know foxes definitely go for them. I know I've seen videos of foxes. Um, humans. Oh, my gosh. That's right. Did you know that people eat puffins? It's kind of crazy to think about if you just briefly think about it, but... Um, chickens are something that we very commonly eat, right? And in a way, a chicken is very similar to a puffin. It's another kind of bird. And so in areas where puffins are very um, populated, so where there's a lot of puffins, it's actually a pretty good food source, even for people. So, um, so it sounds like uh, gulls, people, foxes, and even eagles. So uh, these are only a handful of things. Remember, they live on the cliff sides, as you can see here. And so it's a lot tougher for them to get eaten by a lot of different things when you live on a cliff side. And so those are the kinds of animals that can get to them. Great question. I love this. We're learning together. All right. Um, so I actually have a really cool picture, or a really cool puffin beak that I do want to share with you um, because they're really interesting. Now, we can kind of see it here in the photo, right? But what if we were to explore an actual puffin beak? Now, this is a model, so it is a plastic representation, but let's take it out. Uh, check it out. So I have here, it's called a document camera, so we can see something up close. Oops. I meant to kind of make it a little bit dimmer. All right, this is a puffin skull. So this is what their heads look like. Now, when we're looking at this thing, we're trying to locate things that we can find easily, right? Where do you think its eye would be? That's right, it actually would have an eye right here and an eye right here. There's like a big open hole here and that's how we know. This here is the beak. Okay, and so we can see that split right here. And then what is so interesting to me is take a look how big this mouth is. Remember, it's catching 20 fish. Take a look at the size of where the brain would be. So when you look at a skull, you always know where the brain is because the brain is completely covered in bone. Brains are incredibly important. And so they're very well protected by bone. So this little tiny thing right here, that's where the brain would be. That's why uh, there's that phrase bird brain out there because it does have a tiny little brain, but it has a brain that is perfect for it to think about everything that it needs to do. And that is really the most important part. Okay, so we know a little bit about puffins. Puffins are flyers. They um, catch fish to eat. They definitely have feathers. They nest on cliff sides. There's actually four different types in the world. Um, and oh, we have a question from Matilda asking, why do they have a feather like a horn? Well, that's a way for them to show off how fancy they are. A lot of birds have special things that help them look fancy. Some of them, like a peacock, have an entire tail full of feathers that are bright and they spread them out and they shake them and they're like, look at me, I'm real cool. And so that would be, uh, that would be um, not a puffin. <laughs> that would be a peacock. For a puffin, that horn-like feather is actually a way to say, 
I am so healthy that I have this horn-like feather and, um, and I'm going to be very brightly colored. And so because I'm so healthy, you should be my girlfriend. That's basically what they're, what they're doing with all of their colors and the extra things like, like the horns and the tufts for the tufted puffin too. All right. So great questions, everybody. I love them. Keep them coming. Now, the one thing that I have not mentioned about puffins is where do they live? Well, they live in the north. Now, many of us think about polar bears living in the north. I personally love polar bears, and I think about polar bears often. They live in the north, right, where it's nice and cold up there. Well, puffins also live in the northern hemisphere, so kind of nearby polar bears at the top of our world. And uh, we can find them actually here in California. We do have puffins that can live as far south as, say, Monterey, which is really, really cool. So if you did live here in California and you wanted to see puffins in real life, you might have a chance to see them. Now they can be seasonal sometimes. So make sure that you look up when is the best time to see them if you're really looking for them. Um, but they don't just live there. They live all the way up the coast into Canada and even into Alaska. And if you don't live on the West Coast, if you live on the East Coast, you can find puffins on the East Coast as well. And it's very similar. So um, you can find them kind of in like the New England area and North. Some of them are either, even found a little further South, um, but it's a little bit tougher to find them further South. They really do like it a little chillier. And that's also because their food likes colder waters. And so they're, one, they're going to want to hang out where their food is found. So the really cool thing though, is that um, the Atlantic puffin, so that's the puffin that lives in the Atlantic Ocean, more than 60% of, um, of their population, so that's more than half of their population, lives in Iceland. So in one place, so they have tons and tons and tons of puffins. So if you wanted to see a puffin and you were able to go there, that's a place to check them out. Now again, they're, I think they're seasonal, so make sure you take a look at when that season would be. I think it would be incredible to see. I have not seen, seen that before, but I think it would be pretty amazing. All right, so we've learned about puffins. They are uh, the, the Arctic birds of the north, the birds that like to hang out in the cold up in the northern hemisphere. Now let's move to the southern hemisphere and take a look at some penguins. Now penguins are pretty cool animals too, right? Look at that cute little face. Oh, we actually have another question here. Let's see, from Leah and Jesse in Santa Barbara. Wow, hi there. Um, are puffins related to penguins? So they're related in that they're both birds. And I think that's probably where the relation kind of ends. Um, puffins, although they look a lot like penguins, have a lot of things that are different. In fact, um, let's see, I, I'm going to ask my friend Carrie here how much does a Magellanic penguin weigh? Magellanic penguins are the penguins we have here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, and I can't remember how much they weigh. But you remember those puffins? The biggest, I think one of the bigger puffins is about that tall. It's a, a little over a foot tall, and it weighs about a pound and a half. Okay, cool, thank you, Carrie. So it weighs one and a half pounds. That's very, very light for a bird about this size. And it's because uh, being light helps you fly right? You have to be able to flap your wings and take off into the air. So a lot of birds are quite light and that helps them to fly. Penguins don't fly in the air. And so they don't need to be quite as light. In fact, the Magellanic penguin, which is the penguin right here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. I'm sorry, Carrie, what was that? Eight pounds, right? Eight pounds. Okay. It doesn't seem very heavy, but it is. If that bird had to fly with those wings, it's not going to happen. And that's one of the reasons why penguins don't fly. Penguins don't fly for a lot of reasons. There's really no need for them to fly. Um, but penguins live in the southern hemisphere. So they live on the bottom of our planet. And if you look here, all of the parts that you see that are blue, that is where you would find a penguin. So most of them live where it's cold, as you can see, but not all of them. Did you notice that there's actually quite a lot of space that is not in Antarctica? Antarctica is this, um, this continent right here. This is where we often think of penguins because we see things like emperor penguins and they do live down here. But we have them living in South Africa, in South America. Some of them even live here in Australia and New Zealand. And then do you see this blue dot right there? 
That is actually very warm. That's a Galapagos. And this place right here is a very warm place, except that the water is cool just because of the way the water mo uh, moves around in the ocean. So we do have penguins that we can see here. These are the furthest north penguins. They can't go any further than this because as soon as they get a little further up here, it starts to get too warm and there's no food for them. And so they're going to stay down there. So this is really where penguins live. So they are kind of removed from each other. Now let's take a look again at those penguins. They are pretty interesting creatures, right? Their wings are shaped differently. Oh, here's some Galapagos penguins actually. These wings are almost like paddles. Did you notice that? And those paddle-like wings are perfect for swimming. When you see a penguin swimming in the water, they actually dive in and they flap their wings. And it's almost like they're flying underwater. It's very similar to how puffins swim underwater as well. And then these little feet that you see here. Did you notice these little feet? They're webbed. They're webbed, that means that they have skin between their toes. And that's really great because when they're floating on the top of the water, they can use their feet to paddle around. All right, so they're very, very well adapted for swimming. Perfect for swimming, in fact. And then did you notice the black back and the white belly? You know why they have that, right? The counter shading, that's their form of camouflage. Now, what about their beak? Is their beak the same or different from that puffin? It looks a little different, right? So it's a beak. So the, it's a bird, so it has a beak. But did you notice that it looks a little longer? Maybe even a little thinner. Shall we go look at them and maybe compare them together? Let's go look at our document camera again. So we have the puffin beak that we were looking at. So this is the puffin beak, right? Okay, I'm gonna move that down a little bit. And I'm going to pull in, this is the Magellanic penguin beak. Okay, so we can actually compare the two. What are some things that you notice that are the same? What are some things that are a little bit different? Well, I noticed that this beak here is maybe a little shorter this way, right? So like from here to here, it's shorter. Look at this one. From here to here, that's how it can open. So I bet you this penguin can eat larger fish, and it actually can. They're not like big fish. Um, they're still small fish, but this uh, puffin is going to have to eat fish that are much smaller, and the penguin can eat fish that are maybe a little bit bigger like that, okay? Now, what about its eye? Its eye is located in the same place right here. So it has one eye on each side of the head. So that's, that's similar, right? And what about the brain, where the brain is located, right? There's that little spot right there. And in the penguin, it's bigger, but it's still not giant. <laughs> so, um, so they are kind of a similar shape. The beak, though, seems to be the biggest difference. Very cool. So we do know that both of them do eat fish. They're just going to eat different kinds of fish. And so their beak is going to help them to catch those different types of fish. Now for, whoa, look at that penguin. <laughs> this penguin's smiling for us. <laughs> and if you look inside, did you notice this? It's crazy in there. That's actually, uh, I don't even know what they really feel like, but they almost look like um, they'd be able to hold on to stuff. It's like having kind of a bristly throat. Um, and that's a really good thing because if they're eating fish, fish are slippery and all they have is this beak here to catch the fish. So having a bristly throat actually helps that fish to stay inside their mouth so it can't slip out and swim away. So when they swallow their fish, they actually swallow it whole and their throats kind of, their mouth and their throats kind of help them to swallow that fish. It's, it's kind of crazy. So thank you, little penguin, for, for that great smile, letting us look inside your mouth there. <laughs> All right. So we have Milo asking, where do fairy penguins live? Oh my gosh, fairy penguins. So the little blue penguin is also called a fairy blue penguin. And um, they are little. They're the smallest penguin out there. We have 17 different species of penguins, but these ones are the tiny ones. I believe they're only about a foot 
long or foot tall or so. So they're, they're kind of little. Um, but they are found in South Australia and I believe in New Zealand as well. So, um, so that's where you're going to find them. Now, do they look different than the Magellanic penguins? Yeah, they're blue, right? The other thing is that there's no stripe on their belly. And the Magellanic penguins have a stripe on its belly. Even their feet look a little bit different, right? I think I see some real prominent nails on these feet. And their feet are kind of pink. So I think that's kind of an interesting thing um, to see here. But they have a very similar shape. They're just a different size. And then we have Humza from Torrance asking, are any of these birds endangered? Um, yes, they are. There are actually quite a number of uh, birds that are endangered. And even some of the penguins. Uh, one of the things that the penguins are, are dealing with right now is climate change. So our earth is changing a lot. And with all of these changes, it really changes their environment. So um, part of what they need is really healthy fish in order to eat, right? Well, those really healthy fish depend on a cool ocean. So if our ocean warms, those fish might move to a different place. And where the penguins typically live, they may not find those fish anymore. And that's kind of bad news for the penguins. The other thing is a lot of uh, the ones that live in ice and snow depend on that ice and snow. And if it goes away, then they don't have it there anymore. And th that's part of what um, they're adapted to live with. So there are a lot of challenges out there and there are some populations that are getting smaller and that's no good for them. Um, but there are some populations that are doing okay as well. And it really just depends on the type of penguin or puffin and where exactly they live. So um, thank you for that question. It is an interesting thing to think about. And if you're wondering what we can do to help the penguins out there and the puffins out there, well, we can do all that we can to try to have a healthy earth and a healthy ocean. So what are some things that you can think of to have a healthier planet? Well, some really easy things are to pick up our trash, recycle, maybe even use a little bit less stuff. Maybe we don't need as much stuff as we feel like we need all the time. And um, in doing that, that means it doesn't have to be made, which is really great. Um, or we can reuse, right? Maybe instead of having a, a water bottle that we recycle every time, we can get a water bottle that we can refill and drink and then refill and drink again. Um, another thing that we can do is think about how we use um, energy, turning off lights, carpooling with your family, um, even riding your bike to a place that's close by instead of driving a car. Those are all ways that we use a little less energy out there. And that's going to help our planet because all of the energy that we use, um, the more energy we use, the, the worse it is for climate change. And so we want to uh, kind of think about that sometimes. So really the best thing you can do is just think about this, talk with your family a little bit to see what you can do because it's it can be hard sometimes. Um, so what can you do? Okay, um, we have Xavier asking, how many teeth do penguins have? Ah, good question. Shall we look back at those beaks? Let's go look back at the beaks again. And maybe we can even look at that funny um, smiley penguin. I think Jen's going to look for that smiley penguin again. So if we look at the beak here, we can see that um, there is a slight opening here. And we can kind of open it up a little. And if you look really carefully, you may not see any teeth. And that's because they actually don't need teeth. These beaks are perfect for catching the, the fish that they want to catch. And they're not totally smooth. They actually are a little bit jaggedy. And being a little bit jaggedy is going to help them catch the fish as well. So crazy to think about. Most of the time when we think about animals, they have teeth, right? But not all animals. In fact, these ones don't need those teeth. All right. We have, um, aha, there we go. Look at that smile again. So um, you can see all along the beak here, there's no teeth, but it's a little bit bumpy. It's all of the kind of the, the furry looking throat that is going to help kind of hold onto things. That, that's what our teeth do. It's, it holds onto our food a little bit and chews it up, right? Okay, we have Aleka from Pine Mountain Club, cool, asking how fast can puffins swim? And are penguins faster? Well, it kind of depends on the species of puffin and the species of penguins because there's a pretty good variety in how fast they can go. I believe that um, penguins can go as fast as like 20 
22 or 23 miles an hour, which is pretty quick for swimming, I think. Um, and I think puffins, because they're a little smaller, they might go a little bit slower, but I bet you some of those puffins are pretty quick too. All right, everybody. Well, we actually have run out of time. There's so much that we can talk about, about penguins and puffins because they're such cool critters. If you have more questions and we weren't able to get to them, I'm so sorry about that, but we will, we will text you your answers. And if you do, uh, if you watch this later on, or if you think about some questions and you wanted to um, ask us, we would love to still answer those questions. All you need to do is email us. We have an email address here for, um, for this program, and it's live at lbaop.org. Again, that's live, L-I-V-E at lbaop.org. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Aquarium Online Academy. We do have one more episode today. We're actually going to be looking at at a squid. So if you're interested in a squid dissection, stick around. We'll be doing that at two o'clock. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon.